So Timo wants Zach to go see Karen. Gary and Hayden have, they just refuse to go to hell. And Danny, you reap what you sow. And when you lay down with dogs, baby, you get up with fleas. What's good, y'all? It's your good sis, Erica Fane, coming to you right here on Erica Fane TV with another sisters video. And in this video, we are breaking down episode 20 from season five. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so you don't miss out on any of my sisters' content and conversations. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this episode because y'all, it was not given and this was gonna be quick. I'm gonna try to get in and get out. Some of the most ridiculous storytelling aside from the whole Q and Maurice plot storyline of it all is definitely Gary, Hayden, and Robin. In what world would an outside person who is not of a particular organization be the person to come to a partner within said organization and deliver the news that they have to continue they have to continue to fundraise and pre present three million more dollars to be able to keep their spot as partner? I was watching the scene and honestly completely disgusted because it makes absolutely no sense. Not only do you have Gary, an outsider who does not work for this law firm, Hayden and, Gar and um, Gary actually have a mutual client. So Gary, you should not even be here. The fact that you get to, you think that you can walk around this uh, law firm caught blanche as if you are welcome here, as if it is okay when it's absolutely not, it's beyond me. But on top of that, in this, episode Tyler Perry gets Gary to tell Robin that he has to come up with 300 three million dollars more after last night Gary found out that Robin came up with the initial amount that he had pushed his client to to ask for so not only do you have an outsider having this information brought to him but then you also have the partner subordinate in Hayden co-signing and then they're coming to him like a man from this fake power position and it makes absolutely no sense. It makes just about as much sense as as Andy sitting across from Robin talking about some I'm up for partner. How are you gonna sit across from the partner and tell the partner that you're up for partner? This is his law firm. This is his, sh like I don't know why this little thing not only gave me the ick but completely made me annoyed with the entire episode but i was really really pissed and then not only do we have gary giving this information to robin which he don't know which is something that his partners should have sent him an email gave him a call whatever provided this information so even if Gary was the one to say it then it should have been the second time that robin was hearing it because it that would just never happen in corporate it would never happen. Robin could probably sue his partners for breach of contract and lack of confidentiality in reference to these financial matters because why in the hell would an outsider be giving this information? But okay, cool. Not only that, but then Tyler Perry has the nerve, y'all. He has the nerve to have Robin shucking and jiving in his own damn office going back and forth talking about, yeah, I'm ahead of money in 30 days. My contract says I get a reasonable amount of time. So best, guess what? You thought, you thought you had me. Gotta be quicker than that. And then two seconds later, he's talking about some, you know what, since y'all wanna press me so hard, I'ma have it by five o'clock. And now he looking all sulky and sullen like robin stand up even if you don't have the money even if you feel like this is about to be it you about to lose they are in your office in your law firm at least stand 10 toes down until you kick these hoes out then you can crumble like i was watching it like oh my god every single man in here is pathetic and i cannot like i really just cannot and i hate it because tyler perry gives us such strong moments with robin and such great pieces of his character development that shows that he's strong and resilient and this and that and then we get little weak ass moments where he's talking about since y'all want to press me who gives a damn if freaking frat want to press you press they asses right up out the door this is your sh like i really don't understand and i don't know Again, I don't know why I'm so angry with the scene, but I'm pissed at the scene. I hate that Gary just gets to do whatever the hell he wants in a sister's universe, and he never suffers any consequences for it. Y'all, he threw a girl off of a parking garage. No jail time. No, con like, no nothing. Nothing enough is enough Ugh. 
Now, also in this episode, at the law firm, Fatima takes it upon herself to go and see what's going on with Tamara and Hayden because Tamara's in the break room filling out an application and then she feels like this is the time for her to get an update and, and make sure that Tamara's still on the mission. Fatima's going to get caught. Tamara's going to wind up backstabbing her, I feel, because none of this, it, it just seems dumb, if you ask me. But I'm going to go ahead and mind my business to keep it moving because it's not that interesting to watch, in all honesty. Um, Sabrina's working overboard and has gotten Bio to agree to give the money, so we get to see Sabrina go over to Andy's office in this episode. In addition to, you know, confirming about the money and getting more Reese out, she also mentions about Danny because they all need to, to step in now that, you know, at the top of the episode, we get to see Sabrina. Sabrina walks in and Q's in there and then Danny finally, finally, finally is told that this is the same Q that got me arrested. This is the same Q that slept with Maurice. And it's wild to me, y'all, that she is more disturbed with the fact that she slept with the same person that Maurice slept with over the fact that she slept with the person who put her damn friend in jail and pulled a gun on her friend. But you know, Danny's priorities been all types of messed up. So what, what do I really expect? Now, Q is still trying to play his his BS and do his baby, baby, pleases on his way out the dough. But don't let the dough knob hit you with a good little split, you hoe. That's how I feel about that. Now, um, we get a moment with Sabrina and Calvin where they're talking to Maurice and talking about they had gotten him out. And clearly, next episode, we're definitely going to see him get out. I really enjoy the moments that we're getting to see with Maurice and not Maurice, with Calvin and Sabrina. I think that now and how they're, you know, navigating this traumatic time and showing up and supporting one another and how Calvin has stepped up and supported Sabrina fully. Um, I think this, this is the crux in the, the foundation of what should have been their relationship. Um, Calvin is still fumbling a little bit as he's navigating the jealousy that he has for, for bio and bio, you know, showing certain affections and, um, Sabrina having affections for, bio as well. But I do think that we're finally starting to see like how Calvin in, Sabrina could actually make it like get into a relationship and I think once all this stuff is settled once Maurice is cleared and bio gets his money back then then Sabrina will be free to go ahead and make this official and maybe they can get into an exclusive relationship and stop playing goofy ass games because I'm tired now y'all know what I, I'm here for the only thing I really gave a damn about is at the very end of the episode child when we are back at the salon and um Aaron comes in and he like um did you eat did you take your smoothie did you do this did you do that uh no you didn't well guess what you finna come do it now you finna come eat now you finna yep 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 and I love this black men more of this more of this because we be set tripping my family is always coming for me because I be going, going, going. I'll be creating content. I'll be answering emails on the phone, recording video, doing all types of stuff and will not eat all damn day. Like come and feed me. Tell me to take care of myself because you love this, this, this vessel. You love this soul. And I need to do my damn thing and, and take care of it. Cause that's, that's how you love on us. I absolutely loved it. It's these new moments with, um, Aaron and Karen that I'm really drawing a lot of joy from in watching the series as everything else is running amok i love how he checked her and i love how karen was submitting like girl let this man love on you we love this for you i know you're doing your damn job and you getting this perm even though this perm looks a damn mess karen like let's call a thing a thing that's not how you put on a damn perm i have not had a perm in i don't know how many years a couple decades probably but this ain't it I'm going to need, if we're going to have her be a hairdresser, I want her to be the hairdresser that lays hair down. Why do you, ma'am, you are messing this girl up in your chair. And I don't like it. I don't like nothing about it. You might need to go ahead and manage the salon if this is what you're doing. Now, before the episode ends, we get the moment where, where Zach gets the little visit to his house from Fatima's BD. But we don't get no further information from that aside from what we were teased in the preview from last week, y'all. So go ahead and check out my episode 22 breakdown to see what's the deal with this man at Zach's door talking about he is Fatima's baby daddy. And let me know what you thought about the episode in the comment section down below. It's your good sis you let us talk TV with and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.